Nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, I'm going to go to a &E today. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who it's going to be. Pediatric trauma call, 15 minutes. Code red, helipad response. You're having a heart attack. We want to be in and out of scan in the next 10 minutes. I can't feel any pulse. Reception, can I help you? Yeah, 24 hours, seven days a week. I love that question. What's your opening hours? St George's, London. One of the busiest and most advanced A&E departments in the world. Beautiful. It's as if we've done it before. We are there when awful things happen to pick up the pieces. We have a two-year-old who's kicked like a horse. We see the unpredictableness of what happens in life, and we're suddenly having to explain why it's gone wrong. I can't feel my left leg. You'll be OK. A place where life... Amy, Sophie! Don't be loud. Too slow. <laughs> Love. Such a good boy. I'm so proud of you. And loss. I'm still here. Unfold every single day. So we don't shake hands at this hospital. We fist bump. Can I have a fist bump? <laughs> All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. Hello, darling. You genuinely do see the best of people in this job. You'll see strangers rushing to the aid of someone they've never met. You just see things that make you realise just how important the people in your life are and the people around you are. Hey, me. I wonder what today will bring. Yeah, I'm just waiting for to be called in. You don't cry, do you? No. You're very brave, aren't you? I just want a bit of affection. Yeah. Don't, oh. don't we all? Hey. Yeah. Who's up for it then? Cuddle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone likes a cuddle, don't they? Yeah. Oh, where is it now? Stop ringing us. We're busy. Welcome. Hey, 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 Welcome.
Let's have a look at this x-rays. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. You need, you need to get more x-rays to Why is it two fibulas? It's like one fibula here and one fibula here. Where are the pieces? That one's flipped around, too. Falling from a tree is a substantial height normally. How did they land? Did they land on their neck? Did they land on their back? Did they land on their feet? Because that affects the injuries they're going to have and what you need to do. Andy's 48. Um, he was up a ladder today, cutting some trees outside his house, and he's fallen off. He landed straight onto his feet. The pain's been a 10 out of 10, so we've kept him on the ketamine on route. The hospital transfer notes reveal Andy has two fractured ankles. Do we, we have scoops, don't we? Okay. Yeah, yeah things because we, we don't know what's going on with the spine. But doctors are more concerned that the brakes may have caused life-changing damage to critical nerves and blood vessels in his feet and legs. Yeah. Oh, I can't forget that day at all because he came in so happy in the morning. Okay, let's put it back. We should be yeah. with it. Andy had come round to bring us a wedding anniversary card. Oh. Okay, so this is the worst part. <laughs> then he went off and said, I'll see you later. And I did see him later, but not in the circumstances I would have liked. All right. I'm Mr. Farrell, I'm Peter Registrar. I'm going to check you over top to toe. A neighbour came and they shouted, Andy's had an accident, he wants you to go and see him. Well, I can't run that fast, but I did move. I did look up at the tree and think that was far too high to go up. I've seen your ankle x-rays, they're very broken. We'll talk about that later. Can you feel me touching your big toe? Which toe? The right side. No. OK, and underneath here? No, I can't feel anything there. OK, can you feel me pinching the other big toe? No. Can't feel it on the right? No. And is that normal for you, or is that new? No, I don't think it's normal. You've not noticed that before? No. OK. The numbness around an injured limb always kind of rings alarm bells when you think about where that's come from. Has that come from an injury to the nerves near where they've injured, or has it come from higher up? Can you bring your toes up towards you, both sides? Which side? Have they got injury to the spine or the brain that's making that area lose its sensation? Oh. Definitely feels different, definitely got neurological. Having lost sensation in his feet, doctors need to scan Andy immediately to see if he's sustained permanent damage to his legs and spine. Paramedics said to please move away, and Andy said no. So seat is ready for him. Oh, my God. I think he thinks I'm his surrogate mum. I saw him crying in pain, but I felt helpless. And yeah, so it's something I'll never forget. We'll be scanning from your chest all the way down to your feet. It's been 20 minutes since 48-year-old train driver Andy arrived in recess after falling 12 feet from a tree. Okay, that injection's starting now, 60 seconds. He lives alone, and one of the first people to arrive on the scene was his neighbour, Jean. And hold your breath. Did, did he land on his, on his feet? Like Good He should have somebody to go with you to the hospital. Unfortunately, I couldn't go with him. I couldn't leave my husband here. He's got Alzheimer's and he's happier in his own home. Oh, dear. Oh, God. I don't quite know how long he's lived at the top of the road. It must be six or seven years. 
I always felt a connection with him. Both my boys live away and he sort of really took what they should have been doing for me. When my car service and MOT was due, he'd follow me in his car and then bring me home and then take me back to pick the car up. Neither of us good at opening bleach bottles and I'd leave them on the top and you just open them and just leave it so that all I've got to do is turn it. We are done, yeah. Done? Oh, when my husband spoke to Andy, Andy was so patient with him because he would say something to him three or four times exactly the same and and he would just answer him as if he said it the first time. So, you know, he understood. That's the sort of person he was. You feel terrible. I'm not surprised. I think Andy liked to help people because it made him feel wanted. I was helping my neighbours. Yeah. Cutting branches off of trees that are affecting the phone lines and the gutters. So as I landed, I knew I had broken both my ankles. He has never had anyone to confide in or sort of make a fuss of him. I used to be an ambulance technician with St John, so I just knew, yeah. Thank you. He lost his parents quite young. He lost his father at 16 and his mother at 13. He lost all that security from when he was a teenager that most people have at home. Because he often says, uh, you know, um, your boys are so lucky that they've still got you. Salad. Tuna Nessoir. Mm-hmm. Did I hear you say you were married? Yeah. I've been married twice before. I've been busy. <laughs> well, I'm 80 now, so... You're not? Are you really? Yeah. yeah. Lovely. That's amazing, isn't it? So musicians don't get old, you know? <laughs> they just stay forever. So what I don't understand is all that cosmetic shit they advertise there. There's no cream that will reduce your age. It's impossible. Don't call it an age reduction cream. It's false advertising. Music keeps you young, you know. Take music out of the equation, what will we have? It would be boring life, Nothing. wouldn't it? So music is life, like water. Me. Yeah. Should we put the nanny's keys back because you'll end up losing them? Three-year-old Shane has come to A&E with his sister Millie and grandmother Marion after hurting his leg during a visit to her house. Are you feeling better? No. I hurt my child. Shane comes to visit on a Friday and uh, he was out in the garden playing with these other cousins, they decided to get on the trampoline. And Shane's jumped off. I heard a crack, so I went out there to him. <laughs> These cousins, they're saying, he's OK, look, if he was broke his leg, he'd be crying. Oh, he's faking it. You think he's faking it? You better not be faking it. Yeah. But you know, if you love someone, you can tell from their face that something's not right. So I said, oh, I'm going to take him to the hospital. Has he tried walking on it at all? No, he doesn't want to. Have you tried? Do you want to try walking with me? No, no. 
I felt guilty because like, it was while I was looking after him that he'd done it. He's the next one to be seen. Oh. Hello. Hey, got 12 grandchildren and one on the way. You can tell when it's getting mad because all the adults all start leaving. And bye, Mum. See you tomorrow, Mum. We can't touch things. Look. Well, why? This is a bit Don't low. open it, Millie, because it's got germs in it. Can I do that? When he's a dinosaur and he's got his hands and he's like that and doing them noises, it can get on your nerves a little bit. You're lifting your leg up all right, Shane. It hurt me. It hurt you? Yeah. It's not. I hope you ain't making me come here for nothing. She is how old? 59. So your blood pressure has dropped down a little bit, so we'll just keep an eye on that. What will you plan to do today? If... Well, this all happened when we were having a barbecue yesterday. Oh, so, really? Yeah. 59 year old Angela has come to AE with her husband Anthony after feeling unwell at home. We was in bed, and she said, My heart's going fast. She had a heartbeat normally, for her, was about 45, and I think it went up to about 150-odd. So you had some palpitations that started last night? It started with a uh, rapid heartbeat. Mm. Can I have a quick listen to your heart? <laughs> and I said, you want me to take you to the hospital? And she said, no, no, it's all right. Can you sit forward? Yeah. That's great. If she was anxious inside, she... She really didn't show it. It was still the same in the morning. It wasn't slowing down and it wasn't going to slow down. And I said, i better take you to hospital. We just got dressed, packed a quick bag, just drove. Angela has a history of heart disease and was brought straight to Resus after the triage team took a heart reading of over 150 beats per minute. And you've been quite uh, compliant with your med you've been taking medications every day. Yeah. Cardiologist Dr. Aaron has been called to A&E to assess her. I definitely really enjoy cardiology and I've done, I had like a, a reasonable amount of experience in it. You know, when your heart goes wrong, it goes wrong quickly and it can quickly offset all your other systems as well. I think I enjoy the pressure, which sounds a bit weird, but it's, it's, it's quite nice. How are you feeling at the moment? Tired. I think the tiredness is the fact that your heart's just been pumping along like that for 12 hours. We're not designed to have a heart rate of 150. Anything over 70 is too quick. So a heart rate of 150 is incredibly fast. That's when you get the risk of strokes, so people could fire off clots to their brain, and that can be permanently disabling. Do you know anything about the LMNA gene? Yes. That's what I've got. Okay. I passed it on to my son. He's now got a defibrillator fitted. Yes. So my other son's waiting to be tested. They've got me to thank. <laughs> Some people could be dying in bed with a cold, you know, and they'll play on it. She'll just get on with life. And just, just naturally that way inclined. Blow into this and oh. try and push the plunger <laughs> all the way out. <laughs> Doctors must first try and reset Angela's pulse by increasing the pressure in her chest and naturally reducing the amount of blood entering her heart. So I want you to try and push it all the way to the end. First saw her, she was about 16. I was 19, I think. My sister bought a hairdressing shop from Angie's mother in Brixton Hill. Keep going, keep going as hard as you can. Good. See if you can get it all the way to the end. I pulled my sister aside and I said, who's that girl that's working with you? And she said, no, her name's Angie. Um, but keep your hands off, she's getting engaged next week. I said, oh, fair enough, uh, trust my luck. <sighs> Hello. That's all right, and just relax. Then 
she got married. I got married at the age of 23. I was married 10 years. It hasn't worked. Uh, but sometimes it does. I had two girls. She had two boys. A period of years have passed. My marriage has broken up. Eventually, I bumped into Angie again in the car park basement in Tesco's. She hadn't changed. She was still as beautiful as ever. Uh, I, th I said, how are you doing? How's, how's Terry doing? And uh, um, she said, oh, we've been divorced for a few years now. And uh, I said, oh. Within a, a few months, we was going out. That was not big enough. She's yeah. my soulmate, yeah. It's impossible. We've been together ever since. Doctors' attempts to bring down Angela's heart rate haven't been successful. They'll now need to try a powerful drug if they're to bring it down to a healthy rate immediately. It's been 25 minutes since 48-year-old Andy arrived in Resus. Probably lose my job because of this. What's your job? I'm a train driver. I don't have any family, so... It was just the driving of the trains, I think, that he loved most. And the speed he could go and trying to always to get to... from A to B on time. It was his life. To be honest, I, I really think his job was his life. Hello, you're leaving the orthopaedic registrar on call. Yeah. OK, so I'm in the middle of any recess with open fractures that have got compartment syndrome. I definitely won't be leaving here for about three hours. Doctors have received the initial results of Andy's CT scan, but still don't know if his injuries are life-changing. Yeah. AM. Their immediate concern is the tissue around the fractured ankles, which has now started to swell. Just been looking at your images. Obviously, you know oh, already. I've come through already. Yeah. Oh, good. You noticed that you've got numbness on both sides when I was... Because sometimes I'm saying, can you feel this? And you didn't know I was even touching you. Yes. Some of it is... The nerves are bruised. Yes. Somewhere they've been banged. Yes. There's a possible that it's more than just a bruising and you've actually injured the nerve. Mm -hmm. With all injuries, what you worry about is not being able to reverse what's happened. You know, you always want to try and get someone back to who they were, and you never want to say that you can't. So they'll definitely need an operation. It's because all the tissue in there is being starved of nutrient and oxygen because yes. of all the pressure. Yes. So the only thing to do is to release the pressure. And the way we do that, big cuts down the side of the legs, mm -hmm. probably two on each side, mm -hmm. one other side of the shin normally but enough to basically release all those yes. pressure areas. Yeah. In the worst case scenarios, if not treated, then all of the muscle dies and you could end up having to amputate. Whatever we do to you, you're going to be here quite a few days. Yeah. A week or so. Oh, at least. Oh, all right, Andrew, see you in a bit. You. Perfect. I'm going to try and get him up to theatre. I was worried that he would never be able to walk again. And that, to a young man, is a terrible thing. I find scrubs quite sexy, but this obviously <laughs> so mingy. What do you mean? That, no, the scrubs, so they... They can be awesome. Yeah, they look sexy, but like, imagine all the shit that they've been... They get cleaned every day. Right. Some serious clean as well. Can my lady come with me? Yes? Of course. Okay. Ah. That's where I want to be. Who said you got? She said sit on the bed. She never told you to lie down on the bed. She did? No, she said sit on the bed. And I sit on the chair. Well, I'm sitting on the bed. Okay. All right, hello, sir. Hi, yeah. Hi. So the GP gave me a call. They said you're having a lot of problems with your ear. Yeah. Good. Let me just have a look. So, it just looks like it's not full-blown, but just a few spots. Oh, cool. But the rest of the ear 
looks pristine. The eardrum it's is good. intact. There's no infection. So no medication. I don't think you need to. Holy fucking yes! You've done well. So <laughs> all the best. Thanks okay. Thanks very much. I mean, the monkey, the one in his face. Take one in the neighbor, take one in the friend. Fifty-nine-year-old Angela's heart rate has now been running at 150 beats per minute for over eight hours. There'll be a, a few of us in here. Right. Um, and they'll give the injection. And what is it um, doing? So it will slow down your heart rate. The, the sensation is a bit horrible, and that can make you feel a bit rubbish. Okay. It's not very pleasant at all, but it's not painful as such. Oh, it's, just, right. it's a weird sensation. Okay. okay. Mm. Doctors must now give her an intravenous drug to try and bring it down to a reading of 70 or under. What would we do without modern medicine, eh? <laughs> She's a bubbly person, gets on with anyone. I'm more the silent type. Mm. Yeah, you know what that's from, don't you? Some people would say it was a boring marriage, but uh, you, you don't need aggravation in your life, especially at our age. You're all right. You're feeling all right. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't come without its problems because her boys were adolescents, so it was hard work with the with the boys. But uh, we're two parts of a jigsaw that fit together, and as far as I know, we're happy. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Can you get some dentist? Okay. Already, yeah. Right. She doesn't really need my support or gives me that impression. She's quite a strong, independent woman, a bit like my mum. So I'm going to give it very slowly. Okay. <clears throat> Life is precious. My mum, she'd been admitted from the hospital. The following day, she had a major stroke, and then she lost a speech. How did you feel? Yeah, I felt like a, an ache in my heart muscle. You've got a very resistant heart, it turns out. It's not very well, I know that. <laughs> my mum, she was bedridden when she got released from hospital, so I was there to keep her company, to keep my blind stepfather company, because he couldn't look after my mother. So the first one hasn't worked, is that right? right so we're going to give it a bigger dose now. Doom and gloom. <laughs> With a headache to match. <laughs> I was next to my mum. I just said, I'm going to nip to the bathroom. I'll be two minutes. And uh, as I'm walking out the door, she did the sign of the cross. I thought, why are you doing that? You must be saying a prayer. Anyway, I, I came back two minutes later and uh, she'd passed, so she must have known she was going. OK, we're going to go again. OK, yep, yeah, it's coming now. <sighs> but it's a different kettle of fish with Ange. Still got to think positive in that way. I felt that then. Did you see anything on there? Yeah, it paused a little bit. It's it's trying its best to work, but uh, it doesn't look like it's worked. Sorry. Whilst Angela's heart rate remains at this level, she's at risk of stroke and other complications. After a few hours of th trying all the different medications, uh, I realised that. Uh, <laughs> Everything wasn't working. But I was worried. With two failed attempts, doctors must now try the final resort of shocking her heart. A 
really good. I do love a Kit Kat. Oh, man. Ah, oh, perfect. Standard. See you in a bit. They drive you crazy, drive you insane. What's all the harassment about today, anyway? Listen, we like harassing you. Tell me about your personal life, then. Have you got kids? My well, life isn't interesting. Everyone's life is interesting, you know? You can never say. Mm? Nan! What? Nan? Is it still showing? No, don't. Or you'll end up hurting your other leg. I'll tell you when someone's coming. Lay down. Three-year-old Shane is waiting for doctors to assess his foot and leg after falling off a trampoline at his grandma Marion's house. Shane wasn't due till the beginning of January. <sighs> Don't you fall asleep? Would have been Christmas Eve. I got a call from Alicia, Shane's mum, and she'd been getting pains through the day. No! no Millie, don't put your feet up there. Lay down! She left it till 12 o'clock at night to say, like, oh, she's in agony, can you come over? She was only up the road. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Having a big family and everyone comes for Christmas dinner, I was in the middle of doing the potatoes, didn't tell my husband, I just thought, oh my God, let's, I better get over there to her, because this baby's not going to be waiting around. She can move that one about. <laughs> so we had to get the shower curtain, put it on the floor, and just put her on the floor. And I ended up delivering Shane. So I was like the nurse for the. So I delivered him and brought him into the world. Yeah. And he's our baby Jesus. Yeah. Hello there. Hiya. Is this Shane? This is Shane, yes. Hello. I'm John, I'm one of the doctors here in A&E, and this is Tom, one of the medical students. Can I have a look? Is that all right? I'm going to press. You tell me if it hurts. Is it hurting, Shane? No. Yeah. Can I get... Can I see if you can walk on it? No. Let's Don't give it a try. And if you can't, we'll do some x-rays and give you some pain relief. <clears throat> if you walk towards me... So he's limping on it. OK, well, um, It looks like he's probably sprained it. So we'll yeah. just get an x-ray, rule out if there's any break there. <laughs> This is Mr Trumpeter, who's the consultant who's in charge. Uh, hello, thank you. Hello, Lucky for you. What I'd like to do is I think we ought to get you up to the operating theatre. Okay. We might need to unzip your legs mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the calf area, or on the inside and the outside of the leg. It sounds barbaric, but it will give you the relief from the pain. Yeah. 48-year-old freight train driver Andy is being taken for an emergency operation. Surgeons will cut the skin on his calves to relieve the dangerous swelling that puts him at risk of losing all function in his legs. He never asked for anything from us except, really, our friendship. He used to like coming in because I used to make homemade cakes. <laughs> I said, I haven't got any cakes today. Oh, well, you better make some tomorrow then. We're going to do bilateral external fixators of his lower limb injuries, a debridement of his open injury on the left side. He used to knock the back door. I said to him, I don't want to keep getting up or shouting out, come in, just come in. I don't understand that piece of bone. This is a disaster, this ankle. Half his talus, half his distal tibia is down the side of his calcaneum. He said once that he wished he'd had parents like us. So down at the ankle bone on this side, please. I kept saying to him, you're our third son. And I've always said that about him because of the things he's done for me. Oh, this is so wobbly. He might need an additional pin. I just worry what his future's going to be. Pr 
perhaps I took him for granted because he was always there. Andy will be taken to an orthopaedic ward where doctors will monitor him to assess whether or not the operation has been successful. Just tired. The blood pressure is a little bit low, but that's because we give you quite a lot of medication. Have you ever had a cardioversion before? No. Okay, fine. So you've had a lot of new experiences today. Mm. Um, so we're going to give you a bit of sedation and chucky, and then we'll start with a kind of low voltage, and you'll feel a shock. But they're going to sedate you before, so you, we won't. So I'll be just, awake. You'll be awake, but you'll be sleepy. After unsuccessfully attempting to regulate her heart with medication, Dr. Aaron has decided to try and bring down Angela's pulse by electrically shocking her heart. If it doesn't work, then we'll go up to a voltage and we'll do it again and we'll probably do it up to three times. Yep. Mm. Happy with that? Yeah. Will I jump off the bed like they do on TV? No, 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 no. no. There won't be. No, no, no. <laughs> no none of that. Um, right, so we'll get ready and we'll come back. All right. Okay. If you get it wrong and you do it on the wrong part of the heart rhythm, uh, you could put them in straight into a life-threatening heart condition. It is more dangerous than, than just simply giving medications. You'll be all right because it'll straighten your hair for free. Ha, 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 ha. I've been brought up. Um, the situation is... Uh, Boys don't cry or men don't cry. Very hard to let yourself go. You try not to be affected to that point. My eyes fill out, but they don't. And then I, I get on top of the situation. If you Wait, go, to, go to D, if you, but you're not connected, are you? Pads yeah, are not connected, connected now. Okay, fine. So you select your energy. So you're going to go down to 70. Is it in two? What we might do, so depending on what the doctor wants, we might just get you just to wait in the waiting room. Shall I, if I show you where it is now, I'll, I'll make you a cup of tea as well. Come back, back okay. up, then, uh, yeah. So I'm just going to give you some oxygen now. Okay. Angela will be sedated before the charges apply to her heart, which doctors hope will temporarily stop and then reset her heartbeat. You want to select the energy? Yeah, so we're going to start at 70, aren't we? So that's your energy, yeah. You have to sedate them. To sedate them too heavily and their airway may be compromised. If the oxygen still attached, you can cause a fire. You can, you know, it's, it's a dangerous thing to do. So if you're on the defibrillator, you've got the responsibility of making sure that the patient's safe and your team are safe. Are you right? Charging. Everyone clear. OK, oxygen away. Shocking now. It's been 23 seconds since 59-year-old Angela was given an electric shock in an attempt to reset her dangerously high heart rate. If it doesn't immediately start to fall to a rate of 70, doctors will need to shock her again. We got what we want. God, I kind of wish we'd done this four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We've just got to get on the best we can. If I disappeared out of her life, you know, pop my clogs or whatever, uh, we just got to get on. Hello, you're waking up, okay? It's Everything's all done. gone and it's come out well, okay? It's all done. Okay? Okay. You're right? Yeah. Life is short. You've got to make the most of life while you have it. 
Um, we don't know when it's going to be taken away. All done. All sorted. Your, your, hus your husband's just in the, in the waiting room. We'll give you another five minutes or so just to completely come around from the anaesthetic. Job done. Job done. You love for your children, love for your wife, uh, love for fellow men. If you, if you don't uh, feel compassion towards people, then you know you've got no hope, really. Angela will be taken to the coronary care unit, where doctors will monitor her heart. He's had an x-ray. I'm waiting for them to come back from the results, but he's walking on it now. Yeah, OK, then. Right then, bye. Hey. So, the x-ray has shown he has got a little bit of a, a break. I, I knew okay. he asked it. I, I knew he had done something to it. Um, it's it's very small, but we will need to put him in a, in a cast. OK. okay? Yeah, I love being a nanny. It's nice. <laughs> You get a lot of cuddles. You do get a lot of cuddles. But Shane's special. Are you kissing my hands? He was named after his uncle, Shane. Um, my eldest son. Now what are you doing? He was 36. He was on the roof and he fell. He landed on a hard surface. The force, when he hit the floor, ruptured his aorta and he bled from within. Yeah. What are you doing, mate? Uh... Then, eh? yeah. I just run. I just run. I was just running to be with him. I did get there with him, but he just he kept dying and then coming back. He kept they kept losing his heartbeat and they're bringing it back, but he ended up, he died there on the scene. Hello. Hello. Are you falling asleep there? Alicia conceived Shane around the same week as my son passed away. And then when she named him Shane, it just made it that little bit more special. Oh, that. Baby Shane, it's not actually took the place of Shane, but it, it's getting better for me. He gave me back the part that I was missing in my heart, if you know what I mean. There's kind of a, a part that's missing, and he put it back. It just filled that gap there a little bit. You look after him, yeah? You look after your brother, will you? He's hurt his leg. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's just added more weight to me, that cast. Come. On Monday, your mum's got to come back with him. I can't even remember where I've parked the car. And I've got to do the, and I've got to do the machine, the paying machine. Can you hold that, Millie? Rock. They're thick and thin. Darby and Joan. <laughs> Sometimes I say we're like Darby and Joan. When we first met that day in the hairdressing shop, that was an opportunity missed. Now we're making up for lost time. There should be a few good years left in there yet. I won't trade her in for a new model yet. <laughs>
Andy was sitting in his wheelchair and he goes, oh, here she comes, here comes my, my surrogate mum. And then I got the biggest hug imaginable. He suddenly realised, you know, what the connection is we've got. Yes. Yeah, it made me cry. It's been very difficult trying to cope with the injuries. And it's been quite tough trying to walk. You know, I've got obviously trying to start walking again. I'm on the Zimmer frame doing 10 minutes three times a day at the minute, but it's very, very difficult. It's great to be able to walk again. I'm progressing a little tiny bit every day, you know, that's good. One of my goals was to be able to walk to Jean's and have tea. She's really important to me. She's my, like my surrogate mother. There's not many things that I, you, I could ask Jean she wouldn't do. You know, she's just she's always there for me if I need her. I said to him today, Andy, what's going to happen next year when my car's due for a service and MOT? Oh, he said, I'll be up and about by then. See? <laughs> You're going to have a chest x ray. Execution squad, by the look of it. <laughs> Hello, St George's. Cyclist versus a car. My count ready to set. I felt dread. It was really frightening that I couldn't get hold of him. For a bicycle to make that big a dent in a car, that's yeah. quite an impact. If somebody's got a nasty fracture to one of the bones in their back, it can be really serious. I mean, it could mean the difference between someone walking again and somebody not walking again.